The other night, I bumped into an artist at a bar. Staying true to form, I kept my dark secret under wraps, my love for math. Avoiding that topic wasn't too tricky since my professional life isn't exactly a math-fueled roller coaster. In her eyes, I was just another soul navigating the dystopian world where making a living means juggling gig economy side hustles. She probably figured I supplemented my lackluster income through food delivery, chauffeuring folks around, churning out so-called content, attempting to monetize my passions by peddling crafts or even selling a course on how to balance spoons. This artist, let's call her Madeleine for the story's sake, wasn't entirely wrong. Like countless others, I am on the optimistic journey of hoping my passions pay the bills. However, as things stand right now, I have no job or perspectives. And yet somehow, I know that during this mating dance, presenting myself as such a skillless loser, would be far more beneficial than presenting myself as a mathematician. As it turns out, I was right, as my lovable loser attitude was enough to convince Madeleine to come back to my place to check out my etchings. Unfortunately, at my place, she noticed a couple of math books on my night table. Without giving it much thought, Madeleine inquired whether I was any good at math. Aware that I was treading on dangerous waters, I nonchalantly told her that I was okay at math, which prompted her to declare her hatred for math and all it stood for. Putting my man persona before my mathematician side, I should have just agreed with her and changed the subject to something more pleasant. However, in my typical self-destructive fashion, I went all in insisting that she couldn't hate math because she didn't know what real math was all about. I proceeded to explain that whatever she learned in school was so far removed from real math that calling it math was a sick joke in a world inundated with double speak. What are your thoughts on my attitude? Is school math real math or not? What does real math mean to you? Do you, like Madeline, harbor a hatred for math? To my surprise, instead of making a quick exit, Madeline not only found my passionate speech attractive, but she even asked if I'd be a good host and show her my bedroom. However, rather than letting the whole math discussion fade away, I whipped out my blackboard and dove into demonstrating what real math was all about. How would you explain math to someone who isn't a fan? What's your strategy for convincing them that there is real value in math? And for those who find themselves on the hate math team, is there anything someone could say to reveal the beauty of math to you? Madeleine's only brush with math was in high school and she despised it to the point that calculating tips at restaurants triggered her. Could my charm and pizzazz bring her back to team math? From my perspective, math is a unique form of art capable of evoking wonder, anxiety, amusement, frustration, catharsis, and even epiphanies. While seasoned mathematicians easily sense the beauty in their craft, Conveying it to the uninitiated is quite the challenge. The education system does such an excellent job of destroying real math and replacing it with a corrupted version of itself that I don't blame any more people for hating what they think is math. As a matter of fact, I also hate that fake math and I hate that it has replaced the real thing. Like many other hard real-life problems, the solution here is pretty simple, but implementation is mostly difficult due to preconceived notions. We just need to stop making math education mandatory. I'd go as far as to say that we should simply stop teaching math at school. 
as with most great ideas, this one would be considered crazy, stupid, and ridiculous by most people. But what if you stopped teaching math at school? Basic math skills like calculations would then be taught by the areas that actually used them. For instance, if you took a course in economics, they might need to cover addition, multiplication, and all those operations. The difference would be that people would encounter these operations in the very concrete context of learning how to manage their money. As a matter of fact, given the track record of the schooling system annihilating innate human curiosity, I'd go as far as to propose not making any classes mandatory at all. Instead, let kids learn on their own. Let them develop their own interests. Let's only nurture their curiosity in whatever direction it takes them. For better or worse, I neither have nor want any type of power, so my education utopia will never materialize. Also, I am aware that the best way of creating a dystopia is to follow a utopia to its final consequences. This raises questions in my mind. First, how would my ideas devolve into a dystopia? What kind of utopia did our ancestors have in mind when they devised our horrific education system? I do have some answers to these questions, but instead of preaching them, I'll encourage you to share your own thoughts in the comment section below. As usual, I got sidetracked. Probably pondering why I own a blackboard, Madeline quietly but patiently looks at me a bit confused. I like to imagine that she is wondering what real math is especially if it's not what she learned and hated in school. But for all I know, Madeline might be thinking how to get out of this uncomfortable situation. Let's consider the following starting definition. Mathematics is the art of abstracting patterns out of any part of the human experience. While painters use brushes, canvas, and pigments to express some aspect of the human experience, mathematicians employ their reason and ingenuity to unearth patterns in nature. The so-called mathematics you encounter in a school is formed by some of the most boring and trivial patterns imaginable. However, the realm of mathematics expands much further. Mathematicians uncover patterns in shapes, physics, language, human behavior, biology, music, and many more realms. Some of the patterns that mathematicians discover actually appear in seemingly unrelated fields. Take basic calculus, for instance. It's a language used to discuss the rate of change and the increase in quantities. Such patterns end up surfacing in physics, biology, and music. Once again, all this is kind of obvious to seasoned mathematicians, but how can I express it to good old patient Madeline, who is still looking at me politely and waiting for me to say something? For good reasons, mathematicians have created a very precise but obscure language that's inaccessible to the uninitiated. Unfortunately, some obnoxious mathematicians have used that language to obscure the beauty of some of the crown achievements of mathematics. Admittedly, some achievements would be impossible without the precise language of mathematics. But does that mean uninitiated folks like Madeline would never be able to experience the beauty of math? Just as some people are born deaf and never experience music, are some people born without the capacity to experience math? If you looked at a random sample, you might conclude that most people are actually born incapable of doing math. However, I argue that if music were taught in the same way as math is, you'd end up with a society in which most people would hate music as well. This means that, most likely, Madeline should be able to appreciate math. But what kind of math can I present to her? 
How would you convince her that math is beautiful? I was on the verge of giving up when inspiration struck. I pulled out my copy of Godel Escher bag and showcased some lithographs by MC Escher. Madeleine enjoyed some of the lithographs and she listened patiently and even somewhat enthusiastically to my explanations on how those artworks were related to math. For once, one of my dating adventures didn't end up in complete tragedy. Although I might never see Madeleine again, I consider it a win when my dates don't conclude with me getting slapped. As a matter of fact, this story has a kind of cute ending. After not hearing from Madeline for a month, she texted me that she had just watched an interesting video on the Monty Hall problem. She mentioned that math still made her head hurt, but she could sense some beauty about it. Despite a slight grudge because she wasn't watching math videos from the Academy of Useless Ideas, I took that text as a win. What are your thoughts? What does math mean to you? Do you find it interesting or does it provoke a bit of hatred? Whatever your take is, we'd love to hear it in the comments section below. Stay curious and until next time.